time, there have been countless different styles. There are old styles that are no longer relevant. But there is one style that always follows modern trends. It is called glassmorphism. In web programming, when two elements overlap, create a see-through effect. No, it is not. Yes, that's it. We call it glassmorphism design. Because it is simulating the effect of glass panels. In web design, it is used a lot, and it is also divided into many levels. In this video, I will share with everyone three levels of using glass morphism design in web design. And please subscribe to the channel to watch more interesting videos about programming and web design. Thank you very much. Here I have a landing page. In terms of design, I find everything quite nice. However, one thing that makes me not very satisfied is the color of the tab containing this information. I know this color is a suitable color for the general design, but it's so normal. And that's when I thought of adopting the glass morphism style. The tab section displaying the content below is created from a class of the same name. To use the glass morphism effect, I will first change the background color to transparent. Next, use the backdrop filter property. Blur. Inside blur will contain a value. The higher the value, the more blurred the effect will be. In projects, typically a value of 20 to 30 pixels will be most commonly used. This must be the level that people often use. At this level, we can create a see-through effect on the image behind. Many people when performing glass morphism at level 1. They thought we wouldn't be able to change the element's color when using glass morphism design. The background color of this element will always be the color of the image behind it. Why? When I try to replace the transparent background color with any other color. The glass morphism effect has been completely removed. Because in principle, in fact, no glass can be seen through if it is covered with a layer of color. Unless. That color layer doesn't fill 100%. When I heard this, many of you will come up with the idea of using the opacity property to reduce the color fill but the results will disappoint you. Opacity will cause all content in the element to be blurred. But even so, the blur effect still doesn't work. In fact, there are still many people confused between these two concepts. Opacity is a property that determines the transparency of the entire element on which it is placed. As for the fill I'm talking about, it refers to the transparency of the background color without affecting the content inside. No matter what kind of color coding you use, you can do it. However, among the color codes, the RGBA code is the color code that helps us most easily change the transparency of the color. So, the first thing I need to do is convert the current color code to RGBA color code. The fourth parameter in the Drebia color code refers to the transparency of the color. The maximum is 1 which is 100%, and the minimum is 0 which is 0%. So, if you just want the fill color to be 30%, the value here would be 0.3. So, it works. Now you can customize any color for glass morphism without losing this effect. Did you know that with this glass effect we can create more eye-catching patterns? Now I set the background to transparent. Use background image instead. Linear gradient will create a color transition effect at an angle of 120 degrees. I'm going from white to black. And of course, we need to convert the hex code to RGBA to add the transparent parameter. So not only can color be managed, I can also manage the lighting effect for the element with glass morphism design. At this time, the left side will create a light effect. And on the right is the shadow part. But this is not what I want to mention at level. What happens if I add the background size property with a width of 30 pixels? At this time, the color transition effect from white to black is only within about 30 pixels, but will be repeated many times and create extremely impressive patterns. Likewise, I continue to set the height for the background image and we can create new patterns. Additionally, when you use background images, doesn't just stop at linear gradients. 
There are many other values that can be used, such as repeating linear gradient, conic gradient, radial gradient. Let's try it out. As for which browsers support the backdrop filer feature to create the glass morphism effect. Then as everyone can see, all currently active browsers support this CSS property. However, pay attention to the two browsers, Safari and Safari iOS. If we leave the code as it is, our effect will not work because according to the information mentioned here. Then for these two browsers, you will have to add the word WebKit first. That means in the code. We still use the backdrop filter blur for most browsers. Then you have to add the WebKit backdrop filter blur specifically for iOS and that's the correct way to code. So, that's all the content I want to share with everyone in this video. If you find it interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to watch more interesting videos about programming and web design. Thank you very much, everyone. See you again in the next video.